you're being lied to by all of the big parties, by the expert class, by the luxury belief class who consistently advocate policies that make them feel good, which bring them few costs but impose enormous costs on everybody else. That's what's happening in Britain today. Uh, we don't have immigration, we have mass immigration. We have something this country has never experienced before in its entire history without popular consent. Most people out there who are not in this debate tonight think that net migration levels are 70,000 a year. They have no idea what's going on. Net migration is 700,000 a year. Over the next 12 years, this country is going to change in ways that we can scarcely imagine. Between my daughter being two and 14 years of age, we are going to see another 6.5 million people arrive in Britain. 6.1 million of those because of migration. Immigration is going to represent 92% of all population growth in this country over the next decade. We're going to need about five cities the size of Birmingham to accommodate that kind of growth. We're going to be 70% on the way to another London. You were promised lower controlled, high skill, high wage, highly selective migration. You've been given the opposite of that. You've been given mass, uncontrolled, low skill, low wage, non-selective immigration. You were told that's going to strengthen our economy. Every single study that's been done on the kind of migration we now have, low skill migration from outside of Europe, shows the same thing. It takes more out of the economy than it puts in. We're not getting the best of the best, okay? We're getting low-wage workers who are coming in to take jobs on lower than the average salary. If you look at the two million people who came into this country over the last three years, what percentage of those people do you think came in to work in high-skilled jobs? It's 15%, one five. The rest are students, the relatives of students, the relatives of workers, refugees and asylum seekers, before you get to the 118,000 people that have come across on the small boats. As Thomas Sowell once said, immigration laws are the only laws that are discussed in terms of how to help people break them. And I think there's a lot of truth in that. We're not getting high-skilled workers. What we're getting is a political economy that is completely broken. We're throwing bodies at this economy, expecting it to grow, expecting it to become more productive, expecting it to become more dynamic, but at the same time, we have almost zero growth. We have the longest decline in GDP per head since the 1950s. We've got meager productivity, and we've still got the sharpest regional inequalities in the Western world. So if you're here to make the case for mass immigration, I have a very simple question for you. Where is the growth that you promised us? Where's the productivity? Where's the dynamism? It's not there, because this is a Ponzi scheme. It's being used to help our leaders avoid dealing with the long-term structural problems that this country faces. Universities being one of them. The answer to Polly's question actually is, half of our universities shouldn't be universities. Okay? And, and I say that as a university professor. Um, I'll tell you what's happening. We have record numbers of international students who are bringing their relatives, and here's what's happening at second and third tier universities. Those students are being used to plug holes in business models that are completely broken. The students come in to do one-year MAs, about 25% of them drop out before those degrees are finished. And I'm told to go easy on the marking because to be honest, we can't fail people from Nigeria and India because we need the money. If that's the answer to building a dynamic, innovative economy, it's not the answer that I want to see play out in Britain. The reality is what we now have is immigration austerity. Because if you look at where we're going over the next 10 to 15 years, 
Just think for a minute about what another six and a half million people means for the NHS. What does it mean for GP appointments? What does it mean for schools? What does it mean for social cohesion? And what does it mean for integration? You cannot have an integration policy while running that level of immigration. It's impossible. So I ask you a simple question. Do you want to live in a safe and secure home? Or do you want to live in a low budget hotel which is falling apart where you have no idea who's living, living next to you? Because that is where we are going. The pace of scale and change that we're going to see over the next 10 years is going to make the last 20 years look like a trailer. So we need to get serious about immigration and we need to get serious about what it's doing to our country, including how it's driving our housing crisis and undermining levels of social trust. Robert Putnam has shown this. In highly diverse societies that don't manage migration, the first thing that goes is social trust. Support for welfare declines. Why do people want to pay into a collective pot if they don't know who they're living next to? It doesn't make any sense. Even the Migration Advisory Committee has acknowledged this kind of migration is driving the housing crisis for our young people, raising prices, increasing rents. We have to build 515,000 homes every year just to keep up with migration. Last year, we built 180,000. If you think we have a housing crisis now, where are we going to be five to 10 years from now? And lastly, of all the things that I really care about is democratic legitimacy, is people believing that the system is actually being responsive to them. And the blunt reality is on this issue for the last 20 to 30 years, the British people have been consistently lied to on this issue by all of the big parties, Labour and the Tories. In fact, the Tories more so. What we need in this country is a new politics that genuinely represents the wishes and the aspirations of the British people, that's, that is willing to cut through the taboos and accept that what we have is a broken model of mass immigration which is weakening, not strengthening, our economy and our ways of life. And we need that new politics to arrive very, very quickly. Thank you.